Welcome to EV Tech Explained. Today I'll be introducing supercapacitors. Supercapacitors are energy storage devices capable of delivering power at much higher rates than batteries and have been recently used in Toyota's TS040 Le Mans car in the energy recovery system. This video will briefly explain what supercapacitors are, give a detailed step-by-step -step guide to how they function and discuss some typical uses of the technology. Supercapacitors are charge storage devices that look similar to batteries. In comparison to batteries, supercapacitors have low energy capacity, typically 10 to 100 times less than the state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery. However, they are able to deliver 10 to 100 times more power than a state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery. I will briefly explain the difference between power and energy in, in my following slides. Whilst batteries typically last 1000 charge and discharge cycles before they lose much of their capacity, supercapacitors will typically last 1 million charge and discharge cycles because they function via the physical movement of ions and not via chemical reactions as a battery does. To help understand the difference between power and energy, let's use an analogy of a bucket of water with a hole in it. Water can only leave the bucket via the hole. The rate at which water can flow out of the bucket is analogous to the power. The amount of water that can be held within the bucket is analogous to the energy capacity. A larger hole in the bucket increases the power whilst increasing the volume of the bucket increases the energy that can be stored. Therefore, by this analogy, a supercapacitor is a small bucket with a big hole, whereas a battery is a big bucket with a small hole. Before explaining how supercapacitors function, it is necessary to introduce its internal components. A cross-section of a supercapacitor is seen in the image on the left, and on the right-hand side is an illustration of a simplified structure. The cell contains two identical carbon electrodes held apart by a paper-based separator, and the electrodes are both connected to aluminium current collectors. This simplified structure is redrawn in this schematic as well as the positive and negative ions from the liquid electrolyte. The image on the left shows the ion arrangement in an uncharged cell, whereas the right hand side shows the ion arrangement in a fully charged cell. Let's go through the charge storage process step by step. To charge up our uncharged supercapacitor, we begin by connecting the positive and negative terminals to an energy source. Assuming we're looking at just the negative electrode, the carbon electrode becomes negatively charged. An electrical field is generated near the electrode, attracting positive ions and repelling negative ions. The opposite is happening simultaneously at the positive electrode. The counter ions, which in this case are the positive ions, adsorb to the surface of the electrode and a very intense electric field is now holding the electrons from the electrode and the ions in the electrolyte close to one another. This intense electric field is where the cell is storing its energy as potential energy. So. To recap, we apply potential to the electrodes, an electric field is generated within the cell, the counter ions adsorb to the electrode surface, and the electrons and ions are subsequently held in an intense electric field which stores the energy which we are putting into the cell. Now, if we were to discharge our cell by removing electrons through the external circuit, at the electrode-electrolyte interface, we would have an excess of positive ions, 
Therefore, a positive ion is repelled in order to return the interface to a state of charge neutrality. That is, the negative charge and the positive charge is balanced. Supercapacitors are not a substitute for batteries. Their characteristics make them suitable for different applications. So, which applications are suitable? Applications requiring high power with moderate to low energy requirements, such as cranes and elevators, are very suitable. They can also be used as voltage support of high energy devices, such as fuel cells and batteries. In fact, Honda used a bank of ultracapacitors in the Honda FCX fuel cell vehicle to protect the fuel cell from rapid voltage fluctuations. Furthermore, because supercapacitors are very reliable, they are typically used in applications that are described as maintenance-free, such as space travel and wind turbines. They are also extensively used in smartphones to power the camera flash and for uninterruptible power supplies as a power backup. Mazda also uses them to capture waste energy in their IE loop energy recovery system as used on the Mazda 6 and on the Mazda 3. If you'd like a detailed explanation of the way the IE loop system functions, or any other EV tech, please leave a comment and I will do my best to create a video on that topic.